in a multi-story warehouse, uh, especially in the hot summer months, you can get a temperature differential from bottom floor to 35 plus degrees. So the barrels on these top floors age much faster than the ones on the bottom floor. And instead of 35 plus degrees, we've uh, reduced that uh, temperature differential from the bottom tier to the sixth tier from to five to six degrees. And that's, uh, so there's not that temperature variation and not such a dramatic difference in the, the uh, bourbon that's aged in a very hot part of the warehouse versus the very cool. We still get differences. Even in those uh, six tiers of barrels, we will still get a difference from the bottom to the top, but it's not as dramatic. Uh, we fill our barrels at 120 proof, uh, the maximum is 125 in our industry, and the top tier will always gain strength, uh, percent of alcohol gain in proof. During the maturation process, the fifth tier generally will gain strength, the bottom tier will always lose strength, the second tier will lose strength, and then the, the middle of the tiers, third and fourth, they will, at the end of six years or eight years, ten years, whatever, they will be relatively close to 120 proof, plus or minus a little. So we get differences, but not the dramatic difference. It took us over a year to uh, sampling. I mean, there's an infinite number of ways you can take 10 recipes. And uh, I was uh, talking to a group of uh, scientists early, I think it was this year, and uh, I said there's an infinite number of ways. And I see this guy, I thought he was bored with my presentation. He was working on his uh, iPad or something. And he says, it's actually, and I can't remember the number, he said, this is the, uh, I said, well, did you use all 10 at 10% uh, each? Were they all six years old, or were they all, some of them seven or eight years old? Uh, did you use some at 3% and some at 20%? He said, oh. <laughs> so there's an infinite number of ways. It took us well over a year just to come up the recipe for these four flavors. And uh, we had to limit it ourselves because we could still be going on now. Uh, but uh, we decided on four for no other reason than we're four roses. And the small batch did two things. The idea was to, uh, when we first came back to the U.S., we were, it was a struggle to get into liquor stores. Uh, we're new. The perception is, uh, of the name is bad because of a, the blend of whiskey. And as we began to get in liquor stores, uh, we found one, one facing. I walk up and down the aisles of a liquor store and uh, ask uh, somebody, could you, do you carry four roses? Uh, can you t show me where it is? And so it's right here. And I couldn't see it. It was, it was hard to find because the single barrel was generally in a different area, uh, yellow label. And so we wanted to get more shelf space. And that was an idea behind the unique shape design of the, of the small batch bottle. Uh, and with the roses in the middle of the label, and uh, the embossed roses in the glass. So that would give us now a single barrel and a small batch. Easier to find, and the small batch was a unique bottle. So the whole process took us the uh, entire two years between the time we introduced uh, the single barrel and the time we introduced small batch. Bottle design and the, uh, the four recipes we would use uh, as a bourbon. So we're consistent with that. And uh, then, but any other things are limited edition single barrel bourbon, introduced uh, usually uh, in the spring, around the 1st of April every year, prior to the Kentucky Derby, and then our limited edition small batch, which we bring out uh, every September. Uh, they will be a combination, well, the small batch can be a combination of as many or all or as few of the 10 recipes.